Oh my God, it's Pete's Dragon. The 35th anniversary edition. That's right. You never heard of Pete's Dragon? Really? It's from Disney. And they're coming out with a remake, actually, in 2016. That's why I'm thinking, why not look at the original? I mean, this is one of my childhood movies that I grew up with. I loved it. Of course, the front cover has the kid, Pete, Nora, and, of course, the Mickey Rooney character, um, riding Elliot. Now, this this never happens in the movie. This This is just ridiculousness right here. Like, I don't get it. I, I don't. I don't. I don't get it. It's like they're running Falcor, right? Falcor from the Neverending Story. Anyways, whatever. Let's talk about this movie a little bit. Pete's Dragon. Pete's Dragon. Why Pete's Dragon of all things? Be, you know, because I totally remember this movie as a part of my childhood. And they are working on a remake to be released in, yeah, 2016. So, Pete's Dragon is a Disney film featuring an animated dragon named Elliot, who is, of course, Pete's dragon, so to say. He's an imaginary friend that turns out to not be that imaginary. It's a tribute to the classic imaginary friends that children often have when they're little. I used to have an imaginary friend. He was an alien. I mean, I don't think I called him an alien at that age, but he was up in space. He spoke to me telepathically and told me how I wasn't really a human, but was put on the earth to study humans. Now, as nerdy and crazy as I sound, this scenario fits the era of me growing up. You guys today with your modern space movie dramas have no idea what it was like when space was about giant starships with star drives and alien abductions. The truth is out there! <laughs> Wait a minute. Why am I talking about aliens? Oh yeah, imaginary friends. Sheesh. Let's get back on track. So, Pete has a big problem. He's on the run from his adopted family, the Gogans, which are nasty, dirty, and abusive. But they got a bill of sale right here that says they own him. We got a bill of sale right here, he's ours until he dies! I don't know why, but the bill of sale song is probably my favorite one. Pete and his dragon Elliot head to the town of Passaqua... Passama... Passamastrami... Passama... Passamaquashi? Passama... Padamaquasi? No, Paquamasadi? No, no, Passamamasi? Aquatamapati? Passamadaddy? Aquatamapasi? Aquatamadi? Dapadaddy? Dapamasi? Quatapasi? Passapasa? Passaquasa? Quadi! I know. All right, all right, Passamaquoddy, in Maine. There he meets Mickey Rooney, who pretty much is the town drunk, and he heads home with him to meet his daughter, Nora. They live in, what else, a lighthouse. Later, we meet the villain, and of course, with a handlebar mustache, was there ever any doubt? I don't want to go into many more details, because if you haven't seen the movie, I just don't want to ruin it for you. But I can say that I always loved the way Elliot the dragon spoke. <clears throat> My dad would make those sounds while we watched the movie. I always got kicks out of it. Watching the movie now, I'm a little disappointed. The special effects, the way the movie was filmed, all of it was a magical mystery to me as a child. Watching it now, I can tell you exactly how it was filmed. Sometimes I regret my intense interest in movie making. I didn't mention it, but this was the era when Don Bluth was still with Disney, so he had a hand in the animation for the movie. You know, Don Bluth. He made Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair. <laughs> I had to sneak that one in there. Anyways, the film itself had an $8 million budget, which wound up going over at the $10 million mark. Man, $10 million. And that was in 1977. I'd be happy with a 100k house, but no bank is willing to give me a loan. It really puts things in a strange perspective, doesn't it? Mary Poppins was made before Pete's Dragon in 1964 with a budget of only $6 million. 
isn't that crazy that a movie which costs four million dollars more is more or less a flop in comparison? Anyways, I've always wanted to see that lighthouse. So, you know, maybe I need to do some research and see where it is. Hmm. I wonder if the lighthouse does exist. I mean, it's gotta, right? It's kind of like in Back to the Future. Like that mall existed, the Twin Pines Mall. It probably wasn't called that, but the bottom line is the mall was there. So the lighthouse was there. It wasn't like CG or anything. So I guess Passamaquoddy in Maine is a real place. And Maine has a lot of lighthouses. You know who would know? Stephen King would know. But I don't know. So let's check the internet. The internet will figure it out for us. So they actually built the lighthouse for the movie. And, oh, okay. They built the lighthouse in California. So the lighthouse itself is not in Maine. They built it in California. The lighthouse for the film was built on a point above Morro Bay, California, substituting for Maine. It was equipped with such a large beacon that Disney had to get special permission from the Coast Guard to operate it, since doing so during filming would have confused passing ships. Hmm. There were plans to move the lighthouse to Disney, but due to damages to it, it was destroyed? They... It's gone. The lighthouse. God, I can't believe... I can't believe it's gone. They built an entire lighthouse for a movie and then took it down. They built a lighthouse just for the movie. They couldn't just hop on a plane and go to Maine. No, they had to build a lighthouse. And it's gone. It's... It's sad. I feel like an era of my childhood was destroyed. So, there you have it, Pete's Dragon, and a remake coming soon in 2016. Will it be a flop, or will it be great? Who knows? But the one thing I know for sure, we could all use an imaginary friend like Elliot from time to time. Remember.